As we move into the second third of the season, Connor Laid and I break down where New York stands 12 games in, and we do it with my radio partner, Steve Jolly. This is Matt Harmon from the New York Red Bull Radio Network. It's time for the latest episode of Red Bulls Weekly, brought to you by NJIT. Well, after a rare weekend off in Major League Soccer, despite the Thursday game, we get ready for the start of the middle third of the season today. Connor Laid and I joined by my radio partner. He is Steve Jolly, the New York Red Bull Radio Network. A battle of the number fives here as we kind of make the move from one part of the season uh, to the next. Steve, I joked with Connor last time when we had Sean Davis on his backdrop is all about himself. I would really like to see you get involved with that to see who has the, the better back wall because right now he's blowing you away. Well, I'm, this is the work. I, I got to we can learn about social security issues, some you know things like that. I, I apologize that I'm not properly prepared here at work. But, uh, you know, got to pay the bills here, guys. Got to pay the bills. You know, it was, uh, it, it was clearly – um, I, I would say – a, a, a tough one to swallow, let's say, on Thursday. Um, when you think back to the last time that New York was on the field against Philadelphia, Connor, you know, Steve and I actually, we talked so often about that game during the course of it and, and the different kind of forms that it took. Not sure if you had the same take. After the first half, I think we both said we'd sign for a point at that point. But then you, th- then you go back up and you're up a man and everything is kind of saying – three points are there and then to walk away with one, a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah. I, I agree with you guys. Totally. I think, uh, walking away from it, I think you have a, it's, it's tough to, to walk away with a point there. Um, you know, a team like Philly is always going to be in a game, no matter, you know, even numbers or down a man. I feel like we've experienced that before many times with Philly playing a man down, but, yeah, definitely tough to walk away with just a point, especially at home. I think uh, it, it's not ideal. Obviously, a point's better than nothing, but to be at home, up a man in the dying minutes to give up a goal like that, it, it's it's a tough pill to swallow. And I think, uh, you know, Gerhard's quote after the game was perfect that, you know, it's not acceptable, you know, giving up three points at home. I think every game, no matter what team – walks into Red Bull Arena, you're expecting to win. But to do so with a man down, it, it's it's always tough and a little bit uh a little bit tough to come back from. But I think it's there are definitely some positives within the match. You know what what we'll do today on the podcast is we'll kind of break down what we've seen uh in the first 12 games because it does kind of change from the first third of the season to the second third of the season. And Steve, as they say, you know, it might be more of a baseball term, but I think it holds true for major league soccer as well the dog days of summer. And I think that game that we saw on Thursday night was was kind of it. Scratch, claw, not always going to be the prettiest soccer. Um, the way that the schedule sets up with the with all the Eastern Conference teams playing each other as many times as they do, nothing's going to come easy during the course of the next couple of months. Got quite a few factors there. Um, I think it's a combination of, uh, you know, Long season starting to kick in. Summer's going around. You've got the things of, uh, you know, international calendars. You've got the the heat in terms of, you know, you go in and play in Kansas City, you know, middle of the week. It's not fun and it's not easy, but uh, it's something that you got to do. Um, you know, you mentioned about the Eastern Conference teams and sorry about using the example of Kansas City. But, uh, you know, even things like going to New, York, New England and playing on turf with the extra 10, 15 degrees, it's never easy. And, uh, you know, one thing that I would say, like at least for me in the first third of the season, is that we knew that there was going to be, or at least hopefully, that there was going to be a natural evolution of this team. You've got so many people, so many new players, so many new players from different countries, and it was going to take time. And obviously we've seen 
you know, over the last couple of weeks, that kind of logical progression of the team coming, rallying behind each other, getting some points on the road, and all positives. Um, you know, that, that game that you mentioned in reference to the Philadelphia Union, obviously it was frustrating for everybody. It was frustrating for the players. It was frustrating for us to watch, especially being a man down, I mean, man up. But, um, you know, hopefully this is kind of one of those things where you can take it as kind of a learning lesson. You know, we, we mentioned Tolkien on air, um, you know, unfortunately he kind of rolls his ankle and he rolls off the field instead of staying on the field. Like, you know, come Monday, Tuesday, I think every veteran player is like, Hey man, you might want to think about next time rolling the opposite way to where he can just learn something. And it's just, a, 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 I think a little small example of a, kind of the natural evolution, the natural kind of lessons that are learned during the course of the season. But I think we're all, you know, very much optimistic in terms of how the team's been playing recently. And, uh, you know, create a lot of chances. Uh, we've gotten some big time performances and we've gotten players who have kind of taken it to another level. Um, you know, I'm sure there's quite a few people that didn't know who John Tolkien was, you know, before the season start. I'm sure there's quite a few people that might even not even believe in a guy like Caceres who's come in and taken this team to another level and his play to another level. Um, and then we have two forwards who didn't even exist in, in our kind of worldview of things relative to Red Bull, you know, six months ago. So, you know, all in all, I think there's some pauses that can be taken from the first third. But, um, yeah, it's a it's a battle. This The summers are all, always difficult. It's difficult physically. It's difficult psychologically. So, you know, we'll see how the team responds. Connor, you, you being the, the closest to the locker room atmosphere with a couple of the veteran guys, and we had Sean Davis on last week, to Steve's point, is someone grabbing John Tolkien this week and saying, hey, as a reminder, and you, you know, listen, T Tolkien being as young as he is, he's looking at people talking on social media, and everybody is saying exactly what Jolly is saying, roll onto the field, don't roll off the field, because then play essentially has to stop. Are those conversations happening this week? A thousand percent. Yeah, I think I can already hear Ryan Mara's voice in the <laughs> locker room, giving him a little bit of a rip for rolling off the field. But I think, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. There's a lot of good veteran voices in that locker room. And, you know, that starts with Gerhardt, I'm sure, is uh, passing out some information. And But, the you know, the Sean Davis is the – the Ryan Mara is in there. I'm sure Aaron Long. Aaron Long might have something to say about, you know, maybe if he – didn't take off the mullet. Maybe it's not so quick to roll off the field, but he's very aerodynamic now. And so he, it's much too easy to roll off. But I think uh, there's definitely a lot of messaging. I think throughout the entire third, to speak to Steve's point, um, it's there's a lot of lessons for a young team. And I feel like that's the beauty of so far of, you know, you can take the silver lining with a lot of these injuries. You know, you're testing your depth. You're getting these important lessons learned in earlier in the season where, you know, not to say that, points don't count in the beginning of the year because they certainly do, but you're not necessarily in these do or die games come playoff time. So to learn these lessons now are definitely going to be beneficial. And obviously for a young team, you know, you're going to have some speed bumps along the way, but I can definitely uh, hear those messages already. Cause I, I know that I received them for sure at a young age. No, it's, it's nice to have both of you on at the same time, because I can both, I can ask both of you questions and see, how in sync those that wore the number five truly are. Is there a theme that goes with that jersey going from one to the next? Connor, I'm going to ask you this first, and then, Steve, you can hop right on the back of Connor's uh, answer and give your own thoughts. Twelve games in, five wins, five losses, two draws. If you would have told me at the beginning of the season, after 12 games, the record of the team would be whatever, would you have been close to 5-5-2? Five, five and two? That's tough. Um, for me, I mean, I think I probably would have had a couple more wins in there. Um, I honestly had a lot of confidence in this team moving into it. I think, you know, just getting to be around the team a little bit, uh, you know, realizing what the kind of the standards that Gerhard's putting on it. But then again, looking back on it, I know the schedule going into it, you're, you see some dates on there that are going to be tough. And so I think looking at it, I think this is probably uh, – a little bit under in terms of wins for me, but I think you you know that it was going to be a, a tough run of games. But I think that um, you know the the Orlando's in the summer going to New England twice. You know that's going to be a tall task. Playing Philly twice is always going to be tough. Going into Atlanta, I think there are definitely a lot of positive results there. Um, ones that maybe weren't as expected as some other ones. Um, so I think overall. The fact that they're in every game, I think every single 
result outside of one, it's been a one goal game is very positive. And I think he, there's a couple little factors there that, you know, can put you over the edge and turn a lot of one points or no points into three points there. So I think it's, you know, relatively fair, I guess. And, you know, especially for a young team. And I think you're going to expect some more wins going into the second, third. I will. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this right where we are in terms of the standings fighting for kind of that last spot right now in terms of the playoff. Um, you know, I had some, some, some major concerns just in terms of just the, like I mentioned before, just the different people, you know, the time, the fact that you have all these different nationalities, the fact that we didn't even really have a defined striker force at, at that point. Um, and then with Aaron going down, there was just so many different variables where I had some, 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 some strong concerns to say the least. And, uh, and this team's kind of won me over in the last couple of weeks. Um, going on the road, getting points, hard points. Uh, the result at Orlando, I thought was great. Um, even you know in in, in Atlanta as well. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have some speed months, as kind of Connor alluded to, and uh, and we're going to probably look back, you know, three four months from now from this game and said, you know, hopefully we look at it from a polished perspective and say, oh, look at what we learned from the Philadelphia Union game you know, back in, you know, July, early July, and how we're not doing the same thing, you know, whether it be tactically making some poor decisions, you know, in terms of lack of concentration, whatever it may be, uh, making sure that we kind of finish off a game if we happen to be a man up and, you know, how that changes our perspective in terms of managing the ball and things like that. You know, I just think that um, when I look at this team, you know, I had some serious, serious question marks. And the one thing that has kind of really kind of turned me around recently over the last couple months is just how the team and how individual players have responded to coach. I did not think it was going to take that long, but he does have from our, you know, conversations with him, Matt, uh, this infectious personality. And although he does have the kind of broken English and, and that can be expected, and he's getting so much better with his English. He's just, you can tell that he's just a quality person and you can tell that his team is starting to really rally behind him. And that is a positive, positive sign. If you're a, a, a fan of this team. Connor, I, th I think that's one thing that you and I have definitely picked up on um, having the players that we've had on Red Bull Weekly over the course of the season. I don't think there's been a guy that we've had on who hasn't, without even prompting, said how enjoyable it's been one way or the other, how honest up front, how Steve's word infectious, the personality of Gerhard Struber has been, which you would think now starts to pay off for a young team moving in to the second third of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I think the key for any coach coming into especially a team like this, you've got to win over the veterans. And, you know, I think the remarks that Sean Davis or Aaron Long or Ryan Mara have about Gerhard are, are extremely telling and they all appreciate the level, you know, the level of expectations that he has. He sets the standard really high every single day walking in the building and He's not, he's going to be the first one to tell you when you're not meeting that expectations. And so I think that is something that he can hang his hat on and that confidence will just trickle down through the team, you know, especially with a young group and he, you know, just being, I'm, I feel very fortunate to be able to be around the team now this year. And you can tell in the, in the meal rooms, in the, in the locker room, he's, he's very positive with the young players. He's building them up, but also challenging them at the same, challenging them at the same time. And I think that's absolutely crucial for, for giving these chances to young players, you you have to find that right balance of, you know, giving them a shoulder to lean on when they need it, but also lighting a fire under them sometimes. And I think he has that mix down pretty well at this point. And I think moving into the second half, I think you ramp up that challenging aspect to it. I think you, you've gotten guys up to speed. You've gotten them a little bit more comfortable in what they do here. And uh, they're more comfortable with the tactics and the identity. And so now you've got to start challenging them coming up because, it's a tight race at this playoff line right now. And you look down at some of the teams that are underneath New York and it's going to be interesting coming in this, this second, third. And at the end of the year, I'm sure there's going to be teams fighting and clawing, but now it's the time, especially when there's more competitions going on, you got to find a way to get points wherever you can. And especially on the road, now that you got that first, uh, that first road win, hopefully that opens the floodgates a little bit. Saturday night, July 17th, our next game. It is Inter-Miami who comes into town. 
for the first of two meetings between the two teams. Game time at 7. Steve Jowie and I are on at 6 o'clock. Connor's point of where teams are right now. We're going to come back after a quick break and look at the Eastern Conference a little bit more and open it up as everyone's now played anywhere from 11 to 12. A couple teams, 13 games. Uh, points are very, very important as you move in to, as we said, the dog days of summer. We are brought to you by NJIT. We're back right after this quick break on Red Bulls Weekly. New York Red Bulls Weekly brought to you in part by the New Jersey Institute of Technology. NJIT makes industry-ready engineers in more than 20 fields. If it's engineering, it's at NJIT. Number one in the nation for student upward economic mobility. Learn more at NJIT.edu. We are back here on Red Bulls Weekly brought to you by the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Tight, tight tight race in the Eastern Conference right now in terms of points. It's uh, New England with 24, and then Red Bull in the seventh spot right now. Just seven points are separating uh, pretty much all of the playoffs team. New England 24, Orlando City 21, Philadelphia 20, Montreal 19, Nashville 19, NYCFC 17, Red Bull with 17 in the seventh spot. Uh, guys, before we kind of look at maybe the teams underneath, of those seven, Steve, what's the team for you at least that's been the biggest surprise that a third of the season in is above the playoff line? Um, you know, for, for me, it, it's Montreal. Um, I knew Nashville. I mean, when I look at the other teams, I I, I mean, I knew Orlando was going to compete because of Oscar Perea. Obviously, Philadelphia and Union being consistent over the last couple of years, especially when they started spending money about four or five years ago. New England was going to be New England because of, you know, the Bruce being there. Uh, Montreal, a little bit of a surprise. I knew Nashville was going to be a fighting team as, you know, we saw elements of that, you know, last year. And, uh, you know, the X factor for us is you never know what you're going to get with NYCFC. Um, I, a little surprise, you know, I guess if, if I'm talking about the, the demarcation line in terms of, um, you know, at least in the Eastern Conference, probably Montreal is the biggest surprise. Connor, would you agree with that? I see you nodding your head yes. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think I agree with every point you made there. And I think especially the factor that Montreal has been taken out of their home and have been down in Florida and removed. I think that's such a huge factor. And for them, I mean, they're playing home games, but there hasn't been a home game. And so it's a very impressive uh, record for them uh, being displaced out of Montreal. And I think it's, uh, you know, they're now that they're able to go home, I think it's going to be, uh, they're going to be a team to watch. The rest of the Eastern Conference as it sits right now, Columbus also has 17 points. Red Bull occupies that seventh spot because of more wins. D.C. United with 16, Atlanta 13, Cincinnati 12, Chicago 11, Miami 8, and Toronto with 8. Guys, I'll ask this question. Connor, you first. Of those teams underneath the playoff line right now, what's the team that you would expect to move in to the top seven? Yeah, I think – where do we start? Uh, I think, you know, the obvious one for me, I mean, Columbus, uh, you know, the team with that type of roster, um, you know, the, the guys that they have in that locker room, a lot of whom we're very familiar with, you're expecting them to, to really turn a corner here, especially as they get guys healthy and they, uh, you know, the, the tough part for them, they've got a ton of talented guys and guys who are, out of the team, whether it's injury or international. And so that's going to be interesting, especially now that they've got a ton of guys away with an in international duty. So, but I expect once they get those guys back, once they get a little bit more cohesive, you got to expect that they're going to be challenging, you know, the top three spots you, you, they go on a run and you know, it's going to be hard to be stopped. And then you look at a team like Atlanta, uh, you know, big money spent, uh, you know, a coach and another coach with high expectations and, uh, you got to figure that they're when if they kind of get on a run of things that they can make big strides in the Eastern Conference as well. So you know, there's a ton of teams under there that you could just pick, and they you know that they can do some damage in the Eastern Conference. Steve, how about you? What what's the team in the bottom that you're waiting for their little run to get into the top seven? Uh, yeah, I completely agree with Columbus. Um, you know that they're they're the team. Along with, I think DC United has really turned it around, and I think they needed to make a coaching change. They made that coaching change, and I think they just need to change the direction. You know, they started spending some money, which is good to see. Um, you know, listen, I mean, there's just so much parity in the Eastern Conference. If you rule out any team, you're doing yourself a huge, huge, uh, you know, 
you're, you're not helping yourself because even a, a team like Toronto and everything that's going on with Toronto, uh, I think Josie's going back now with the team and everything like that. They get on a little streak and next thing you know, they're only nine points out from playoff position, you know? So, you know, this is, <laughs> we, we talk about it on air, Matt, all the time. I mean, there's just so much parody on this Eastern conference. This is going to be for me, the quintessential season of major league soccer. You do whatever's necessary to get yourself in that playoff by ever whatever way is necessary because um you know i don't think there is a, a one team that's kind of blowing everybody away kind of thing and it's just going to be one of those situations where when playoffs come you want to get in that spot you never know what's going to happen you're going to battle compete and uh you know i i think just by watching all the games that we've watched so far in the first third, third of the season i don't think you can you know count on any team in, in, in the eastern conference right now what let's take guys toronto out of the mix right now because of the coaching change, the thing with Altidore. Connor, to your point, uh, despite Montreal kind of bucking that trend and not playing games in their home country, Toronto clearly has struggled because of that. Is it fair maybe to say that Red Bull's next opponent in Inter-Miami has been the biggest disappointment in the Eastern Conference so far? Yeah, you know, I think that's – they'll have a, a, a big case for that. Um, you know, you talk about a roster that they have with uh, some incredible veterans, uh, a lot of really good young players as well. I think it's been a team that since really their inception in the league has underperformed. Um, I think you bring in a coach who's trying to, uh, you know, instill his, his own uh, touch points on the team. And so you knew it was going to be a little bit of transition there. Um, but you got to think for a team who's, you know, ha has the type of quality that they do not to have a home win, I think is really tough. Um, and, you know, any team who wants to be successful in this league needs to perform at home. You need to win your games at home to set yourself up, at least that baseline of points that you can build upon. So I think that's going to be one of the big things for Miami to turn around is you got to win at home. How about you for, for Miami? I mean, I, I think you and I started to talk about it a little bit uh, during the course of the Philly game, just looking at the schedule coming up for New York, which does include Miami on Saturday, then Toronto, uh, the midweek game. They've got another game with New England. They'll see D.C. United for the first time officially, though the teams did play a closed door scrimmage a couple of weeks ago. Why has Miami, in essence, kind of, I, I'll, I'll say, taking a step back this year rather than a step forward. Yeah. Um, where do I even begin with them? Um, they're a hot mess. They're a hot mess. And I'm talking about on the field, off the field. You look at the ownership situation. You look at the whole DP situation in terms of them not quantifying DPs the right way. Um, owners wanting to get out now and sell specific, you know, stakes in the, in the, in the, in the organization. And this is a team in 11 games that's only scored nine goals. You know, I would have never thought that. Um, you know, I just, if there's probably one team I don't think can turn around, it's probably them because they're so deep in just so much bad stuff, so much bad karma, bad kind of like on and off the field stuff that's going on there that I'd be surprised if they turn this around. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like, you know, Chicago gets on a nice streak. So we're like how I think Toronto is going to get on a nice streak, but we're going to remove them for a second. Um, you know, you look at Atlanta over the last uh, you know year or so when they had some problems with the front office and, you know, some complaining and, you know, some decisions in terms of, uh, you know, bringing certain players in the cost of certain players. And next thing you know, you know, Atlanta struggled a little bit, you know, recently, but um, yeah, inner Miami is a hot mess. I am definitely not, uh, not expecting them to turn this thing around anytime soon. Short of a Steve Jolly return or a Connor Laid emergency, clearly with the transfer window open right now, you would think, guys, that uh, the center back position is something that Kevin Thelwell is looking long and hard at. The injury issues uh, have been there. Case in point, the other night against Philadelphia, um, at, at one point, there wasn't even a, a true center back that was playing in the game. Steve, you and I have talked a lot about Tom Edwards, and I think he has done a magnificent job filling in. But you clearly feel feel better about the team knowing that Aaron Long is out for the remaining part of the season. Uh, that Amro Tarek this year, for whatever the reason, has had injury issues. I, I think going into the year, you would have said Long, Reyes, Tarek, 
Nealis, you feel pretty good about that four. But right now, um, assuming, you know, Sean Nealis, who didn't play the other night, and I think that was a big factor in the Philadelphia game as well, assuming he's back and seems to be okay, you, you're still pretty thin in that spot. Um, so I'll, I'll go for – yes. Um, I mean, the fortunate situation that we're in right now is that, um, you know, it seems like Fabio and Clamal is kind of – have worked well together and and that probably relieves a lot of pressure in terms of what might need it to be done uh, relative to the transfer window. But, um, you know, it's gotten to a point defensively that, you know, we need to, to figure out a game plan there because, you know, Aaron's not coming back and, and Tark has been inconsistent in terms of injuries, but which hasn't helped in any capacity. Um, Nealis has probably been in the bright spot of this 2021 season relative defensively in terms of how he's kind of gained himself uh, in terms of leadership uh, potential. So that's good to see. But, uh, you know, I didn't have Nealis as a starter coming into this season. You know, I don't think anybody did, quite frankly. Um, so, you know, th- there needs to be, you know, somebody on the, you know, whether it's trade, transfer, whatever it needs to be. I mean, I think you're going to need to, to find a veteran, veteran, veteran in there in the center back position and, I hope I'm not the alternative because I'm old and lazy and I'd be great for the locker room though. Right. You've always said get, you, you're you good for a solid five, six minutes, but that's. Uh, may, I may be pushing seven minutes. I mean, I'm getting on, you know, doing a little bit of running, trying to get in shape here. So seven, we'll see seven tops. And in the summer heat, maybe three. Well, that and probably my contract's going to be like, if there's a, like an important golf thing on TV, then I'm going to say, Coach, sorry, I can't play this game either. So my priorities have changed in life, obviously. Connor, is it, is it fair to say that that center back spot, that's it's got to be the focus right now bef- over the course of the next three, four weeks while this transfer window is open? Yeah, 100%. And uh, yeah, I think if either of us are on their radar, we're in even bigger trouble than we are. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think that's absolutely the top of the wish list right now as transfers go. You got to get some center back depth in here. Um, obviously Tom Edwards has played valiantly really in that role and uh, a role that he didn't come in expecting to play, but he's, you know, it's got an incredible head on his shoulders. He's a, he's a, a guy with a lot of experience playing there as well. So that helps, but I think, you know, the injury bug has hit this group big time uh, more than others. And so you're just waiting for guys like uh, obviously not Aaron, but Amro and Andreas and Nealis to get healthy. And I think that's uh, you don't want to rely on having to, uh, you know, get guys back from injury. You want to have that depth already there. And, you know, even look at a guy like Manny Egbo, who was brought back into the 18, brought back up from rebel two because of the center back situation where, who, where he's been playing, uh, kind of out of position as well for Red Bull too, but they know that what he can bring to that position, they that's a real asset for us right now. And so I think that is absolutely a, a place of need, and I'm sure that's going to be addressed in this transfer window. Two more things, guys, before we wrap up. One serious and one, as we always like to do, we'll have a little fun with. Uh, other than center back, both of you guys put on your head of sports, sporting director, general manager cap right now. What – else is this team in need of to make the jump from the top seven to the top three? Oh, I'll let you go first, Connor. All right. I'll jump in there. Um, For me, I think it's, uh, it's attacking midfielder. I think, uh, you know, I think we've got a lot of really good pieces, but when you see guys like Caden out with, uh, with his appendix out and, uh, Danny struggling with the injury bug. I think we need another piece there who can facilitate this offense and kind of help with, uh, you know, I think Fabio and Patrick Lamala have done excellent. Obviously that partnership and their emergence of their connection is incredible, but someone who can help unlock this attack, which has really done pretty well so far this year and scored a lot of goals, which helps obviously, like Steve said, with the center back situation, if you're scoring goals, taking a lot of pressure off the back, but I think there's another piece that could be added in this front three or front, however many there are when there are two forwards playing. But there's one more piece in there that I could really feel could challenge for not only minutes when a healthy Caden is back, but solidify himself in this group for whenever it is that Caden is going to Leipzig. Um, so I, I, I agree in, the, in terms of that position. I'm not saying that we need an extra or a different player. I'm actually 
calling on one player to kind of take his game to the next level, and that would be Frankie Maya. I think he has potential in terms of being a two-way midfielder to kind of take this team to another level. Um, and I don't know if he's found his spot or his confidence yet. And uh, and that's kind of what I'm kind of tuning into, I think, over the next couple of months is, you know, is, is Amaya going to take his game to the, kind of the next level, um, which, you know, I obviously hope he does. Um, I think he'll get some opportunities. Um, and so we'll see. But um, that would be the one player in the, in, in the position that I think could be, you know, take this team to, you know, you know, that, that top third of the Eastern Conference where you can feel comfortable come, you know, September, October that we're a playoff team and that we're just kind of finding, fine-tuning everything for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I guess I said the top three, guys, because I'm thinking top three. You want to be in that top three because you want to make sure you get a home playoff game, especially in that opening round um, moving forward. All right, let's finish with this one. Steve is on record, Connor, as saying his favorite jersey and kit in Major League Soccer is the Red Bull Dark Mode kit. And for whatever the reason, this popped into my mind. What is the favorite uniform combination that each of you have worn in your days with either Metro Star or Red Bull? Give me a year. Give me a color. Give me a combination. Give me yeah. something. That's a, that's a tough one. Oh, I can tell you the worst one I had. Like, automatically, the, uh, the old um, – Oh man, Dallas Burn jersey of 2004. That was like, I forget what company. It wasn't Nike or Adidas or anything. It was the ugliest, like worthless, like uniform I think I've ever worn in my entire soccer career. And that is including my like under four, like Yule Sport jersey I used to wear in 19 or 1979. I think it was. It's that's, that's how bad it was. I forget what the company was. I probably shouldn't even say the company's name. It probably doesn't even exist anymore. But people could Google 2004 Dallas Burn before we came to FC Dallas. It was painful. Probably okay. 100 pounds, too. Yeah. Um, for me, sorry, I got a bug flying around here. Uh, I think my favorite all time had to be the. The dark uh, what was it 2012. We wore it out in LA. It was it was the 2011 away kit, and we had it in 2012 as well. It's the the really dark ones. They weren't black. It was more of a a midnight navy, I would say, with the red stripes. Uh, I think that one was one of my favorites. Um, dark mode is an all timer for sure, and I think the the sorry over this one, the red kit is uh, one of my favorites. So I'll give you I'll give you three there, but I think that that dark navy one was uh, was one of my favorites. See, did you notice that Steve? He can point behind him, and he's got jerseys and things to reference. You just have a big white wall behind you. A white wall of nothingness. Yeah, that's, that's how <laughs> of no, that's how I am at work sometimes. Uh, just a, a wall of nothingness. We just spray paint a big five behind there, and that's all that needs to be said. Okay, it's okay. Um, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, I'll I'll try to uh, to amend and, and upgrade uh, my office for for next time I'm on air. How about that, Steve? Is it fair to say that you know you and I, because we do things on social media before the game, after the game, and Connor in his position of player relations? You and I would look really good in a couple of dark mode jerseys doing some of the social media work that we do. I mean, it would seem like the logical thing to do is as we've referenced it so often and they're still available for sale that, you know, there'd probably be, you know, an opportunity for them to sell uh, some of these jerseys. But, uh, hey, you know, what can you do? You can just Look, throw it out there and hope for the best, right? Just the just the radio guys throwing <laughs> ideas out. Just, just throwing out some ideas. Just throwing out, just like we're our, our toasted lagers. You know, we just throwing out <laughs> ideas there, Matt. Doing what we can do. I might I might have uh, have something for you guys next time. So stay tuned. Are we, are we going to charge the uh, the whatever? We do get the discount, the thirty five whatever discount they give us. But uh, I'll I'm, give I'm you afraid that uh, Connor's going to say, "Hey guys, I got you something." Just write a check to me, you know, personally. We'll, 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 it'll all be good. I'll take, give you the extended family and friends discount. Take it off. Take take it off of your game rate. Just put it on the invoice a little bit less than it normally would be. Uh, guys, this was fun. I look forward to doing it again with both of you soon. It's always good to kind of connect back and 
um, give a, a little bit of a, a state of Red Bull as we move into the second, third. And again, next game, Saturday night, tickets available for that one. Go to Ticketmaster.com. Uh, the team has this home game. They've got New England coming up later on in July as well with uh, trips to Toronto, trips to D.C., sandwiched in between. For my partner, Connor Laid on the Red Bull Weekly podcast and my radio partner, Steve Jolly. This is Matt Harmon signing off. Thanks for joining us here. It's been another episode of Red Bulls Weekly. Thank you.